today in surprisingly connected etymologies, a cornucopia of food-related etymologies. If you're ecologically minded, you'll likely avoid wearing fur and avoid meat products in your food because of all the pasture land it takes to farm animals. Fur comes from Old French forêt to cover or line with fur, from Proto-Germanic faudrum, sheath, ultimately from Proto-Indo-European pa, protect, feed, with pi, p, becoming Germanic f, due to the Grimm's Law sound change. This root also leads to Proto-Germanic fod, food, Old English foda, food, and Modern English food. What's more, this root also gives us the word pasture through Old French from Latin pascara, to feed, graze. The words canopy and canapé sort of look and sound alike, but what's the connection? Mosquitoes. Etymologically, canopy means mosquito net, coming from Greek canopeon, derived from konops, mosquito. This passed into Latin canopeum, which could mean both mosquito net and a couch with such a net. And the word canopy? Well, it's the sort of food you'd eat while lounging on such a couch. Is there minestrone on the menu? There should be, etymologically speaking. Menu is a shortening of the French phrase menu de repas, list of what's served at a meal. From Middle French menu, small, detailed, the detailed sense leading to the list sense. From Latin minutus, small, from minus, less. This Latin word was also combined with a comparative suffix to produce the word minister, inferior, servant, from which, of course, we also get English minister. From this noun developed the verb ministrare, to serve, attend, wait upon, which eventually came to mean to serve or prepare food, eventually leading to minestra, soup, literally that which is served, and minestroni in Italian, borrowed into English to refer to a particular type of Italian vegetable soup. If you like cocktails, you should be sure to garnish your aperitif. The word garnish comes from Old French garnir, provide, furnish, fortify, borrowed from Frankish warnian, from Proto-Germanic warnon, ultimately from the Proto-Indo-European root wear, to cover. This root is at the heart of the compound ap wear yo, with the prefix ap off, and becomes Latin aperire, to open, uncover, and then French aperitif, laxative, laxative liqueur, literally opening, because an aperitif is meant to stimulate the appetite and thus aid the digestion. And finally, it turns out, speaking of digestive juices, is etymologically appropriate. The words juice and enzyme are connected by the notion of the blending or mixing of food, expressed by the Proto-Indo-European root yewa, which has descendants meaning soup, such as Sanskrit yua and Old Slavic yucha, and in particular Latin yus, which through French gives us juice. This root also produced Greek zume, meaning leaven, yeast or other rising agent, which gives us the word enzyme. Thanks for watching. This is one in a series of occasional short videos about connected etymologies. To see more, you can also follow the Endless Knot on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram.